It is a nature and it is a nurture issue. For example, we know, for instances, that for instance that someone like Cho had a particular neurochemistry, uh, two brain chemicals, some a chemical named catechol O methyltransferase and monoamine oxidase A were deficient in his brain. Most likely, we know that. I would feel comfortable predicting that. Individuals with that particular brain chemistry lack empathy, and they are unable to respond in an empathic way to the distress of others. But that particular brain chemistry or neurobiology, the, the nature, if you will, was not sufficient, not enough. You have to mix that with a particular family environment. And even that isn't enough. You then have to put that person within the context of a greater society. You then have to add a triggering mechanism. If you, I analogize this when I'm teaching it, Mike, to the formation of a hurricane. Not only need the warm water, you need the air currents need that tropical depression, and then ambient temperature coming in from someplace else. And if you mix all of these ingredients in the right proportion, folded and mixed at the right time, and then you bake it, you get something that is a disaster. Your question is a fantastic question. Why so many? And in fact, the answer has to do with, I think, the ambient culture and our desensitization promoting that is part of the digital native. The digital native is the kid who no longer goes to Funk and Wagner Cyclopedia. They're online. They're plugged in seven hours of every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year in some manner, and the messages they receive are desensitizing, in other words, extreme expressions of violence without consequence, a lot of sexual images, bombarding the sensory system day in, day out, and what occurs is the central nervous system numbs out. And when we're numb to this, we no longer feel the empathy and the anxiety that comes from watching another living creature suffer. Some folks ask me, for example, the difference between serial, serial and mass murderers. And the, and the issue here about this person is that when he first engaged in this, the cries, the screams, the pleadings, the terrors, he was desensitized to that. It rolled right off of his back. And we create this with a very troubling regularity in this society because we bombard our children with images that can have no other effect except to desensitize. Dr. Anthony Napoleon is our guest. If you have a question or a comment, our phone lines are open at 433-9782, 1-800-388-9782. Back with more of Speaking Up. Speaking Up brought to you in part by the Timberville Drug Store. Count on the Timberville Drug Store to take care of you like a good neighbor would on Main Street in Timberville. Wake up with Jim Britt and Frank Will. Wake up with her. Speaking of, speaking of medicine, our guest, Dr. Anthony Napoleon. He is a uh, internationally recognized expert in uh, board certification in medical psychology. Our phone lines are open. We are talking about the impacts and the factors in Cho Sung Wee that we should study, the Virginia Tech killer. 433-9782-1800-388-9782. We were talking during the break, uh, uh, Dr. Napoleon. Uh, This stuff doesn't get recognized the way it should early enough, is it? It does not, and and when it is recognized, we have nothing in place to intervene because in, in this society, it is very difficult to involuntarily commit someone, to force someone to seek care. If you recall, uh, the system did work up to the point where a judge had access to Cho and could have mandated that he 
be involuntarily committed. Had he been involuntarily committed, he would have been examined closely for 72 hours. He would have been medicated. And there would have been a, a, a tripping of a mechanism that would have labeled him. And instead, a very cost-effective outpatient choice was made. And Cho could choose or not choose to attend care. But I think we as a society must decide that we are going to choose to stop these events before they occur as opposed to picking it apart, um, wailing and gnashing our teeth for two weeks, and then when the news cycle changes, put it in the past and it becomes simply the latest notch uh, as we wait for the next ritualistic tragedy. We, we can do better, and we should do better. You have a concept that I find fascinating, because I don't think I've ever heard it before, the deselected male. Explain what that is. Well, it, it is a, a notion that I wrote about in, in 2001, and I was particularly interested in how, again, certain victims in capital crimes can be identified a priori before. And I found a nagging pattern in, in the unattractive male who, absent social graces, charm, sense of humor, or intelligence, is deselected by women. Women are naturally very selective. They all want Superman. One person once asked me, a student asked, oh, Dr. Napoleon, can you tell me what women really want? And I said, everything. That's what they want. If you read the personal ads and study them, men, as a generalization, want some companionship. They appreciate someone who going to be decent and, and nice, and pretty is a nice thing, but women want brains, they want looks, they want financial security, they want somebody to take them across the world. So they want everything. A guy like Cho is deselected, as most men are deselected. Now, some of us take better to this than others, but note, notice something about Cho's history. He wanted to date a supermodel, and in fact, he invented in mind that he had a supermodel. I noted, noticed with some interest that his first victim, God bless her, was a very attractive woman, and that Cho may have, according to my studies, been aware of her, seen her, and had developed a fantasy relationship about her. Men are treated very badly by women who deselect them because they're not attractive and they lack social skills. I cite in my in one of my books having to do with murderous rage classic examples of attractive women being killed and other successful boys. If you look at all of our school shootings, you find that Two targets jump out, attractive women and athletic, successful boys. They are at a risk. And these, these men, whether it um, Jonesboro, Arkansas, or Springfield, or Paducah, Kentucky, or Moses Lake, Washington, Pearl, Mississippi, Littleton, Santee, California, and now your beautiful state... All of these fellows have something common, not only just nature, but the nurture. And the nurture, not to identify it as the only cause, because that's not right. It's a but, you know, Doc, uh, in every slasher movie, the people who get slashed are the beautiful women and the beautiful men. It's a brilliant question, great insight. The question I would ask you, is it art? imitating reality or reality imitating art. I would suggest that the screenwriters have it about right. 
and it is very dangerous. I mean, I, I, you, this, this um, Clarkson case and Phil Spector is, a, is another iteration of this same phenomenon. This man, this very unattractive...